creatures of the night if you are here watching this review you're here to see a pretty face not necessarily hear anything great about rampage now i was watching smackdown i was watching uh straight up wrestling's watch along and as entertaining as they are they could not keep me from falling asleep from this boring ass episode of smackdown I, the last thing I remember seeing was Dragon Lee come out and I was just like, all right, I'm done. I'm over it. Um, I don't want to turn this into a SmackDown review, but the same thing I'm feeling about um, AEW right now is just that watching that episode tonight of SmackDown, or well, at least of what I saw, it just feels like I want something new. I don't want to see things... They keep playing things out the same way, but just with different people. And, and it's like, can can things be new and fresh in professional wrestling these days? I don't know. Like even WWE is struggling to give people new shit. That's crazy to me. Now, when I did woke up, Rampage was already on, and um, as soon as I turned it on, um, the match between just um, Dustin Rhodes and the Butcher had finished. So I went back and watched it. And honestly, it was nothing special to me. Um, I actually like both uh, uh, The Butcher and Dustin. And real talk, these two guys don't get enough opportunities to do a damn thing. And all they had was just this little exchange the other day, which I think was on Wednesday. And then they have a match. And it's just like, okay, um, who's supposed to be happy about that? Who's supposed to be hyper to see something like this? There's just no buildup at all with people we haven't seen for so long. Matter of fact, with people that always lose every time we see them, it's it's just absolutely crazy. Um, Dustin takes the win here, and th that's great and all. And and another thing too, as great as I think Dustin is, I feel like we see the same thing from him in every match too. But it is what it is. Boring. Now we move on, and we have the ass boys and Jay White. They well, I wouldn't say they broke into Daddy's ass's house. They, they do they live there? I have no clue. They live there, but um, they end up getting in. I guess they got the key. They got a way to get in. So I guess it's not a break in. And Jay White is starting to, um, I don't know, throw things around in the kitchen. And then just when he was about to break the TV with this like golden bat, um, Daddy ass and his wife comes through the front door and chases them out the house. Whoever it was that was holding the camera, his ass done fell down onto the carpet and he's shaking up and everything. And I'm just like, all right, they left the cameraman. That's not gonna be a good thing when Billy make it back to the house. Now, I don't know where they're going with the whole acclaimed daddy ass versus Bullet Club Gold. Obviously, they're gonna end up having a match. Um, a Jay White, uh, as boys, there is a Ring of Honor pay-per-view and you guys are holding Ring of Honor titles and I want to see you guys at the show and I want to see y'all drop it to anyone else uh, who obviously can take the titles and do something with it in Ring of Honor. After this, you guys, we have Deanna Perrazzo. She's in the ring with Rose. And I found it interesting, Rose does not wear shoes in the ring, so she's barefoot. I always like to see that because it's something rare, especially with the ladies. You don't necessarily see that often when it comes to ladies and a few men wrestle barefoot. Uh, the match was, can be, I uh, just was not interested at all. And like I said, it's not like um, I wasn't like interested in watching wrestling tonight. It was just, I, I just wanna see not just new things, but new good things. And I just wasn't feeling it at all, so I didn't really care. Obviously, Deanna takes the win. Um, they did show us a little video package. We got Will Ospreay versus uh, Will Hobbs, Powerhouse Hobbs. So it was a battle of the wills on Dynamite, and that's gonna be so interesting. I can't wait. Like, their styles are so, so different. And I don't see Hobbs winning it, but this really needs to get him over. Absolutely needs to get him over. And and I can't wait to see what happens. So every member of the Don Callis family is going to be facing uh, Will Hobbs. I mean, not Will Hobbs, Will Ospreay. And I think out of everyone in that group, Will Hobbs have the the, the most different style. So Kesha and, and uh, Fletcher, I don't want to say their style is similar, but it's very different from Hobbs. So it's going to be interesting to see how Hobbs go against uh, Will Ospreay. I can't wait to see that. Now we have Timeless Sony Storm 
and um, Mariah May. Mariah May has a match against Nikita. Nikita had a match last night with Athena, and uh, she got her ass whooped. And then this time, uh, Mariah May whooped her ass too. And I'm just like, okay, we literally kind of seen this yesterday. Um, the whole time that Mariah's in the ring, every time she seems to kind of be getting beaten up by Nikita, you can see Tony Storm is upset and she's trying to, um, you know, give her advice and what to do next and whatnot and during the match. And Mariah May ends up taking the win. She is uh, incorporating a few of Tony Storm's moves and she obviously still have that old Tony Storm uh, gear on and she's also still using that theme. I don't think that this is a good thing for her, but they're doing it anyway. And for the first time that I actually heard, um, Tony Storm refers to Mariah May as her protege. And I was just like, okay, she's acknowledging her. That's great, I'm pretty sure. Uh, Mariah May is happy about that, but I don't know how well that's going to work out for her um, in the end. Something about it I'm not really feeling, but I'm still loving the Tony Storm, a timeless, timeless Tony Storm character. It's great. It makes me laugh. Uh, but Mar Mariah May is going to have to stand out for uh, like her own reasons, and she hasn't been in the company that long um, to be pretty much being Tony Storm. So now we have Lexi Nair backstage. She's with Harley Cameron and Zack Knight. Zack is doing an interview and Harley is playing all up in Lexi's hair. Lexi's trying to be professional, but really she's freaked the fuck out by Harley being weird as hell. Now, in the middle of the interview, out of the blue, here comes Angelo Parker going to attack Zack. So Zack is just doing his little interview and here comes An Angelo. Angelo was just about to get hit by this pipe that was in um, Zach's uh, pocket or whatever. But then here is Angelo going to get an even bigger pipe. And well, you know what? That doesn't sound right. But you know, you know what I mean. They're both about to attack each other with pipes. He ends up hitting him with the pipe like in his back a few times. And then Zach ends up running away. But then here is Ruby. Ruby comes, and I'm not gonna lie, she looks like she has like a million more tattoos than the last time we seen her. And she goes and kisses Angelo, and she says she's not down with all this foolishness, and she ends up walking away. Looks like she broke up with his ass. I'm not 100% sure, but that's probably the case. Now after this, we do get a little video package from uh, The Righteous and Lance Archer. They have a match tomorrow night, for a collision against BCC. My boys BCC, they actually were at the um, CMLL uh, event late, uh, earlier tonight. Um, and I just could not find a way to watch this because in order to watch CMLL uh, events, you have to be subscribed to their, not subscribed to their YouTube channel, but you have to get a membership through them, which is a hundred, not, not a hundred, it's 700 pesos, which is about like, 40 something dollars us and i had no clue about it or whatever but i ended up missing it but i did see a few clips bcc did lose tonight willa nightingale won her match um very interesting very interesting hopefully i can get a chance to see some of these matches tomorrow but whatever that's the match that we're getting tomorrow bcc versus the righteous and lance archer so we'll see what happens with that uh, y'all know uh lance archer and claudio have some unfinished business. Now, main event, we have Roger Strong versus Daddy Magic for the international title, okay? And I'm looking at this and I'm just like, well, how did Daddy Magic even get a fucking opportunity to go for the title? Um, with, you know, I, honestly, I don't have any clue. But then, um, before the match even started, the crowd is going crazy about Daddy Magic. And I'm just like, well, what the hell is going on? Why are they cheering for Daddy Magic? I never hear people cheering for Daddy Magic like this. Um, a little later on is when I realized, oh, okay, he's from Quebec. It took a long ass time. Y'all, I must have been tired as hell for me to not connect the dots. But um, I had no clue where Daddy Magic was from to begin with. Um, it was like after the match started, I'm seeing like Daddy Magic is really trying to come alive to get this title. And I get it, the title's on the line, he's gonna wanna win. And then Roderick is taped up in his shoulder, 
But Roderick Strong looked like he'd been at the gym, you guys. Like, real talk, he looks, well, I don't want to say great. He just looks better than what we remember him for. And Daddy Magic, his whole ribs is all wrapped up. And I always say, like, when you taped up, wrapped up, um, wh wh whatever condition you come in a ring in, uh, people are going to look at that as a weakness. So they see you, your shoulders taped up, they're going to focus on your shoulder. And with Daddy Magic ribs being uh, wrapped up for weeks now, that was basically what Roderick was focusing on throughout the match. Now, the crowd was absolutely showing so much love to Daddy Magic. And I was like, I was happy for him. I was. He's over here wearing um, jeans is what I've noticed. He's been wearing jeans lately in the ring. And um, he had a shirt that had the Quebec flag, flag on it or whatnot. And like I said, I didn't put one and one together to realize that's where he was from. Um, the crowd was... Um, you know, like whenever he was punching on uh, Roderick, they were counting in French. And then I was just like, oh, shit. And, you know, I kind of thought that was cool because you obviously I can count to 10 in French, too. So I'm counting along and that kind of woke me up a little bit. And then instead of calling him Daddy Magic in English, they called him Papa Magie. So that was pretty cool. And every time uh, Excalibur would say Papa Magie, I was just like, oh, my God, he sounds so weird saying it. I don't know what it is, but whatever. Uh, Daddy Magic was really fighting. He was on fire for this, but honestly, he wasn't going to win. We knew he wasn't going to win. So he ends up taking the L here because we had distraction from Undisputed Kingdom. And um, after this, Undisputed Kingdom, they get in the ring and they're beating up on uh, Daddy Magic. And then here comes Orange Cassidy, Jesus Christ. Orange Cassidy is on every fucking show. For what? I... I I had no clue. Uh, Trent Beretta came out there, thank God. And they're over there um, trying to save Daddy Magic. Now, while that happens, then out of the blue, here comes the Young Bucks. They come just in time when Orange Cassidy and Trent Beretta was going to, you know, do their hug like they always do on camera. They come and give them a low blow. They have a match next week on Dynamite with each other. The winners of that match is going to go to the finals for the AEW Tag Tournament. And as much as I don't want to see Orange Cassidy with another title, I'd rather Orange Cassidy and Trent Beretta's team advance instead of the Young Bucks. I don't want to see the Young Bucks winning titles anytime soon. But guys, um, like I said, SmackDown, Rampage, boring as hell to me because they're not giving us anything new. I didn't really care for it. Even Jay Cargill coming out for the first time on SmackDown, Nick Aldis sound like a fucking robot, like he can give two shits about her being there. I did not like his tone when he announced her coming out. And I, I just did not really care for it. It's, it's just a lot of things that I'm not feeling from both companies. And really, I could have literally just been sleeping throughout both shows and I wouldn't have felt like I missed anything important. But if y'all want, go ahead and check out the shows. All the clips from both shows are on uh, YouTube or wherever you want to watch the shows. And they're all there for everyone to see. Um, but I'm, I'm just getting bored with these shows or whatever. And sometimes I don't even come. I don't feel like coming out and even reviewing Rampage because it's literally not worth it for the most part. But I do because you guys listen and I appreciate it. So thanks for watching this review. I'll be back tomorrow with Collision. Bye.